Hello and welcome back to Gale Bearers Repairs. Today we're going to be tackling the front brake discs on this 2011 Citroen C3. Quite a basic task, easily achievable by the home mechanic. Remember, if you enjoyed what the video today, you like, subscribe and share. Let's get on with it. Hello and welcome back to another... Hey, one of the first things we got to do, put a rag or a bit of kitchen roll there or something, undo the brake fluid reservoir cap to release any pressure. So just catch it on to keep any debris out. And then when we push the piston in, it'll allow the fluid to come back up into the reservoir and it won't pressurize. So that's one of the first jobs. Next job, Jack the car up, get the wheel off. All right, I've got the wheel off and I'm about to renew the brake disc. We've got to start by undoing these two Torx bits. Start by giving these a little squirt with some uh, penetrating fluid. Sometimes these are seized in. Let that have a little soak. Okay, I'll start by putting a pair of pliers in the vented part of the disc there to jam it up. So the WD-40 or the penetrating fluids had some time to uh, to soak. So we crack these off. Oh, he went okay. Just a couple of securing screws for the disc. There he goes. These can be very tight. We will grease these when we refit. Remove the pliers. So now the disc should be quite free from the uh, hub. I'm now going to put the steering on full lock. Okay, in order to get the disc off, we've got to get it past the brake pads, which are in the caliper here. But there's a lip. That's why I'm renewing this disc. There's about a two mil lip all the way around the edge of this disc. It's quite heavily worn. So, in order to get it past there, on this car, that's the piston of the caliper, and that's the pad and that's the disc and there's a pad on the other side there. So on this one, we can just feed a screwdriver in there and we can just push the caliper, the piston back. So now that'll allow us movement on the pad. There we go. So I've prized that pad away and I'll be able to do the same in there. So and now we need to remove the caliper and the caliper hanger. We could do that all as one. Right, this is around the back of the brake caliper. So that's the caliper, the piston, and this is the brake hanger that the caliper is attached to. We're going to disconnect the hanger and the caliper as one. It's a T55 Torx bit. So it's those two bolts there that we're going to undo now. This one and this one. They are creamed up quite tight. Normally we need a bit of length as per usual. <laughs> we need a breaker bar to probably crack these off. I'll show you that from the outside, but that's what it looks like on the inside. Sorry about the flickering light, it's an LED one. So that's the two bolts. All right, so I've got one, one on the back there, the Torx, the T55, and they should be tight, these. Yeah, they are, he is tight. There we go, so he's cracked off it, it's only that initial cracking off of it. And then the one, at the lower one as well, got to do that. Okay, so we'll get on the lower one now. With the T55, there it goes, he drops in. Yeah, so these are tight, they are. They are creamed up, so 
I've just cracked them off so now we can now we can spin them out. That's what you can expect to see. Just that bolt with the T55 head. Quite a large bolt. Now we'll do the top one. I'm doing all this from the outside of the car, which is what you'd likely to be doing if you're beside the road doing this or on your driveway. Second bolt. Now the whole assembly will come away now with the pads and the caliper attached. And this is why we opened up the piston earlier to allow that travel. So the whole thing comes away. As I said, the whole thing lifts away as one piece. So you've got the caliper, the brake caliper itself here. The pads are still contained within. There's the brake pads and the piston that we compress backwards. That's the hanger that the caliper attaches to. So the whole thing we can now tie up out the way. I've got a little bungee cord. I won't bore you with that. So uh, I'll do that and then come back. I'm now going to straighten up the wheels so the disc is facing me. So now the disc is free. We've removed the two securing tabs. So that's all good. The next job, the disc goes around this hub centric part here, around the center of the uh, hub. So we're just going to give him a little squirt. And then we get the hammer and we tap him side to side, top to bottom, side to side, and we work it out, we walk it out. So there we go. So that is the disc removed. There it is. So that basic. All we've undone really is uh, four torque screws, two on the disc and two on the brake hanger. So the next bit is cleaning. The next job is wire brushing up. Now, because it's brake dust, ensure you've got a dust mask on. You don't know what the dust is and what effect it's going to have on your lungs in the future. So I'll uh, get to wire brushing. We're just cleaning around this flange here where the brake disc mounts. If we don't do this and we've got some debris here, some rust or corrosion or something like that, it, the disc can sit unevenly and then when it's spinning, it can do this. It can go from side to side and you get brake judder. So it's a critical step here. We're just wire brushing off. Nothing special, nothing technical here. And a wash down with a little brake clean to get rid of the uh, dust. And we'll allow that to dry. It evaporates fast, the brake clean. Yet again, got the wife's kitchen roll, don't tell her. <laughs> she shouts at me. All right, the next job to make it easier in the future, <clears throat> make it easier in the future for somebody to get this off, it's more than likely going to be me. We're just going to put a smear, we don't want much, just a smear of copper grease. Spread it around thinly. Next thing we do is pop on the disc. So here's our new disc. This is a nice one. It's um, it's coated. It's got a coating on it to prevent corrosion in the areas that doesn't get scraped off by the uh, brakes. So all we do, that is mating on there. And the only thing we gotta be concerned of is the two late alignment screws. And we just place it on. Very basic. 
And then those two little screws. Again, we just dollop a small piece of grease so they don't seize, because these are known for seasoning. Known for seasoning the holder, so. So when we're doing these up, these are just a light nip. They're only to retain the disc now. They're not gonna, the disc is never gonna fall off once the caliper's on. So these are just a light pinch to be nice to the next person who's got to come along and get them off. So we just, you know, my door just slammed in the wind. So we just give them a, a nip up. It's a firm nip, but we're not, uh, we're not heaving these up. That is it, that's your disc fitted. It's that basic. So I'll now spin the, spin the wheel around in order to refit the caliper. It's those two bolts. It's as basic as that. Okay, so I've got the caliper off the bungee strap up there, the bungee cord. All you've got to do is make sure that the pads are apart in the, in the caliper. Like so, and then we just slide them slide them over the new disc like that so we've got now the caliper and the hanger are sort of where we need them I've now got to go around the back and catch the uh, torx bits the pads in here do need replacing I'll be doing that in a minute and I'll show that in a separate video it'll be the next video from this one okay so I've just got to lift up Lift up the hanger and the caliper assembly to get the hose in the line. So just got to catch that one so it's hanging off of there. So what we need to do now on this one, these we apply a little bit of thread locker to the threads. So is that in focus? Yes, yeah, so you can see I've just got a little bit of thread locker on the threads there. So now I've got that one caught. I can re remove this one to put the thread locker to put the thread locker on the threads here. And then we catch him. Nice and tight with these. I'll get the breaker bar on them just to cream them up a bit. And come on the outside there, get the breaker bar on it. And then just give them a good, a good tighten. And there we go. That's that back together. Next thing we gotta do is uh, spray a bit of brake cleaner on the disc, get rid of any oil residue. These have been painted. These are like a galvanized material. This scrubs off when the pads wear it. So this is not coated in oil, but a lot of them have got a protective oil film on them. And you've got to rub that off or else you uh, you won't be breaking. So we'll just give it a spray down. I'm not going to put it on now, but um, I'll always smear a light film of oil on the edge of the disc where the wheel face bolts to so that would have a smear a fine smear of uh, gold grease on it as well a bit of copper copper grease i'm not going to do it right now because the next video i'm going to do i'm going to show doing changing the pads on this so i'll put it on after i've changed the pads that'll be in the next video but this job is done um you've just got to before you drive the car, push the brake, pump, pump the brake a few times just to uh, compress up the pads onto the disc. 
because we prized them apart in order to get the disc out. So that's all that's uh, that's all that's required really. Quite a straightforward job. Okay, we just got to put the lid back onto the brake fluid reservoir after just pushing that piston back slightly to do the disc. We've got to put the wheel back on and take it for a spin. Okay, so that's the brake disc replacement. Easy task, I would say, for your average home mechanic with basic hand tools. The next video that I'm doing is the brake pad replacement on the same vehicle, on the 2011 C3. So uh, if you click onto my next video, you'll be able to watch that and do the whole job. Remember, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, to like, subscribe and share, and I'll uh, catch you next time.